Hi, and welcome back to your autism game plan. I'm Joya Vanderlaan, a family nurse practitioner, a functional medicine specialist, and an autism mom. Today, we're gonna to be talking about toxins found in the bathroom. Last time we talked about toxins found in your foods. So toxins found in the bathroom. Remember, we put a ton of stuff on our bodies and even on our kids' bodies that we don't really think about. There's toothpastes, there are um, shampoos, body washes, conditioners, um, lotions and potions, um, all sorts of stuff that we use, right? So we wanna make sure that if we're putting it on our skin, on our children's skin, that we know it's getting absorbed and therefore we wanna know what is in those products and do we want those ingredients getting inside of our children's bodies? So let's take a look. I'll start with talc because that is something that many of our kids have at least a good chance of being exposed to at a very early age. Talc, of course, is very common in powders, so baby powder. A lot of parents still have used baby powder to, you know, treat the child's diaper area um, in the case of it being too moist or whatever. We're just, that's what we're taught. Oh, we'll just sprinkle some baby powder on the baby's butt. That's what it's for. Well, this can lead to different problems, including things like ovarian cancer, um, but also respiratory problems. So if the child is breathing in powder particles, especially if they're toxic powder particles like talc, which very often is contaminated with asbestos, then that's problematic. So we don't need to use baby powder on our kids' bottoms anymore. If you must use a powder, if you really are tied to that powder, um, or even for underarm um, dryness, try cornstarch instead. Far less toxic, really not toxic at all. Um, and then you're avoiding that talc or the baby powder. Mineral oil or petroleum found in products. This is this is substance is coming from petroleum um, or you know underground gas do we really want to be putting this on our children's skin or even our skin it can cause hormone disruptions it clogs the pores so we can't eliminate toxins through our pores so not only is it toxic on our skin but prevents us from detoxifying this is found in all sorts of stuff it's cheap um, and it's it's it adds a certain texture quality to the product Think about Vaseline, petroleum jelly, okay, that so often is recommended to put on everything from eczema to skin rashes. You know, let's let's avoid that kind of stuff. There is non-petroleum um, jelly available, um, or you can even just use olive oil or coconut oil on your child's skin. We don't need to use products with this petroleum and these petroleum products in them. Parabens. Parabens are in all sorts of products, shampoos, lotions, gels, uh, different soaps, creams. So make sure you turn the bottles around and look, or is this, does this have any parabens in it? Methylparabens. So any big word that contains the word paraben even is a paraben. So you want to avoid those. A lot of labels now are, are calling themselves paraben free because they know now people are looking out for it. So it can be a little bit more easy to identify now. Um, you can find soaps, shampoos, creams, gels without this in it. Um, one of my favorite soaps to use is Castile soap because uh, it can be used for all sorts of things. One product for both body cleaning and even house cleaning. So counters, floors, sinks, um, toilets even, you can use Castile soap on. Um, it's very concentrated. So a, a little bottle lasts a long time and it's really not expensive. It's hemp based. Um, and when the Castile soap is scented, when it smells like something, it's because they've used essential oils, not um, harmful toxic fragrances. SLS or sodium laureth sulfate is another toxin that you really want to avoid. Um, it's a foaming agent and so it's found in soaps and even toothpastes. Now remember we absorb things a lot better from our mouth even than we do from our skin. So if we're using this toothpaste and brushing your teeth, our kids are brushing their teeth ideally for two minutes hopefully, um, that's all being exposed to the inside mucous membrane and being absorbed. 
So there are lots of natural brands of toothpastes that are not using SLS. Those are the ones that you want to look for more. Um, there's a brand called Coral that the kids like. It's a very mild flavored kind of berry toothpaste and they've liked that one. It doesn't have SLS in it. Um, so look for SLS free products. Another toxin you want to avoid in body products or bathroom products is called triclosan. And that is an antibacterial agent that's used in some hand soaps usually. Um, it has now been banned in the US um, and hopefully in other countries as well, but you'll still find it from time to time. The efficacy of hand washing comes more from the friction than from the soap or any antibacterial um, activity or product in the soap. So really, rather than exposing your kids to triclosan, it's better to teach them to scrub. That's going to get the germs off better. Phthalates. It's a, it's a hard word to spell, P-H-T-H, phthalates. Um, but it's used as kind of a plasticizer. You'll find it in nail polishes. So if you're painting your kids' nails ever, um, you might be exposed to it. But also just in general, um, you know, even hairsprays, that kind of thing. It is a hormone disruptor, which we don't want to mess with our kids' hormones or our hormones. So again, better just to avoid products with phthalates in it. Turn the jar around, turn the bottle around, and look for anything with even a part of a word that says phthalate. Lastly, anything that says fragrance or perfume or parfum um, is going to be potentially toxic. So we don't want that in products that we are using on our children or ourselves. Turn the bottle around, read the label. I sound like a broken record with food, with these beauty products, anything like this. Read the label and you will, you will know what's in there. And if you can't read the words, if they're too complex or there's some chemical name you don't understand, then that just may be your answer. If you don't know what it is, do you want it on your child? And if they're not willing to tell you or label on the bottle, what is this fragrance or this per perfume made from? Why? Is it something you want to put on your child or have your child soak in the bath with? Let's go for natural products. Be sure we're being safe. If you need something to be fragranced or to smell, smell nice for your child, your safest bet is to use diluted, natural, pure essential oils. Now, there are many more toxins that our kids are possibly exposed to in the bathroom, but again, to avoid overwhelming you with too many things, I picked kind of the top offenders or the most common offenders. Um, so see if you can find substitutes for things that you're using. Um, you don't have to throw away everything in your bathroom and buy all brand new right away, but as you run out of a certain product, look, when you replace it, look for a more natural alternative. That way you're not wasting product, you're not wasting money. Or you could choose just to get rid of it all and totally revamp your bathroom. That would be a fine choice as well. Thanks for joining me. And remember, be gentle with yourself. You're doing a great job.